along, because I'm conscious of time. So we'll go on to the mixolydian mode now. We've got some more syllables here, right? So this one, even though we're going to be using the, uh, the minor pentatonic shape, this is actually a major sound, okay? Um, so the highlighted note on your sheet um, is not necessarily the note that deviates from the minor pentatonic scale, it's the note that deviates from the major sound, okay? So I'll just give you a quick run through of what those are. So the first thing we're doing is we're going to raise what's normally an eighth fret here up to a ninth fret, so a major third, which you might recognize from the major scale shape familiar. Then we move into our normal minor pentatonic vibe. Note, and you play a D note, 
is not the nicest note to start on. So some people will actually raise that to this Lydian thing uh, to avoid the avoid note, if that makes sense. Um, so I'll give you another example of, uh, of that in a minute. So anyway, let's go through the scale shape. Now this one I've sort of borrowed from a slightly different source. I don't know how important it is to say, but it's a, this is like a Japanese pentatonic scale. Right, I picked up from a magazine many years ago, but it happens to be like a Lydian thing. So we have our root note here in the fifth fret, major note, because it's a major scale. The raised D up to D sharp, which gives it its personality. Tone is the name given to either the generally the flat fifth. 
So from the scale, let's say A major scale from the beginning, we can number all of those uh, notes as scale degrees. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So when we flatten that fifth note, it's called the tritone. And I think, uh, you know, this is where we get into more of like a diminished kind of sound, right? And those move around in minor thirds. So that's where your tritone thing comes in. So we've got two minor thirds stacked on top of each other. One, minor third from the minor scale, and then a minor third above that, or three frets, is your tritone. That's what's going on there. Banned by the church. Yes, supposedly so. Yeah. I've heard actually, I've heard some conflicting reports as to the validity of that, but I really like the story. I think it's good. So, for anybody that's not familiar, supposedly in medieval times, I suppose the tritone was banned in churches because it invoked the devil, which is probably why Black Sabbath used it again in that. <laughs> it is pretty evil sounding, isn't it? It's a distortion. <laughs> So, um, but it's a really great device you can use if you can wield it in a way that uh, justifies itself. And the same with this, um, this semitone dissonance that I had before, which is even more dissonant. Again, you hear that a lot in metal music too. Especially modern stuff. But you can do it in such beautiful ways, hopefully, to, again, just um, bend the ear. Because we don't want to be safe all the time. We want to sort of throw, throw a cat amongst the pigeons, but then and save it right at the end and bring it back home again. Or just leave people in a very strange state of mind. Whichever you prefer. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before we... Yeah. Have you had any sort of thing listening to what I call contemporary bluegrass playing where some of the more advanced players are playing modes? Um, I'm not sure which ones, but um, in bluegrass you're not holding on to them, so you're not sort of using any resource that you're playing cleanly. Yeah, I suppose the, there's a slight difference of approach, I think, with bluegrass. I don't know, I'm a bluegrass player, but I think there's a lot in common between your bluegrass and, and country uh, and its derivatives and bebop. Uh, and generally, people that are improvising in those contexts are thinking more specifically about the chord tones themselves or playing in triads. Um, or even arpeggios, or however you want to think about it. Um, so I don't know, you'd have to ask somebody that, that plays that style, how they sort of approach it. But I think it comes back to that sense of, like I said earlier, there, all of the answers are correct, really, I think. But again, if you're, if you're looking for whatever mode of, well, excuse me, perfect, mode of understanding that makes it make sense for you, um, then great, then it works, right? But um, yeah. From what I know, they're probably more thinking about, as I say, the, each individual chord and playing to that. Um, but I'm sure there's as many answers to that as, uh, as the players, yeah. Well, you're playing all these different modes, and you're going, well, I'm looking at it from, you know, making the scale, I'm sharpening that, or I'm flattening that, and whatever mode that is, you know? I mean... Yeah, no, I think that works particularly well Again, if you play a lot of slide, you're playing sort of in a linear fashion across the neck, then that approach works really well. Um, most guitarists who play in standard tuning don't think as, as much in those terms as far as linear. They're not as good this way. We tend to be better down yeah, the neck this box. way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But absolutely, if you're playing across, and this would be a really nice extension to this idea, would be to take your scale, Just find a short section of it which is on just one string and then see if you seeing if you can find those notes there as well so that you can play across the guitar and up and down the guitar as well um, but yeah I think if it was me as well if I'm playing if I was playing in the sort of slide based thing I would be thinking here's my major scale and then I'm just going to tweak that note up or down one just to give it that vibe yeah. And if you've already got if you've already got the notion of the sound that you're going for, then it's easy. You can just reach for it. Like for me, the, the Lydian mode sounds kind of purple. I don't know about you, but it's sort of purpley, sort of floaty and purpley. Whereas the mixed Lydian scale, um, I don't know, it's like a yellow sun or something like that. Everybody's different, right? So you find you find your own uh, perspective.
Any other questions? Anybody keen to come up and have a bit of a play and try out some of the scale shapes that we've looked at? I've got an amp here, and we can put on a bit of a blues blues jam for you if you're keen. I'd love to have a jam with uh, with somebody, so I have uh, allowed, allotted some time for it. Anybody keen? Yes. yes. straight into your playing, again, without having to read through manuscript upon manuscript of uh, academic research to get there. Um, I'll just give myself a quick plug. So my name is Daniel Wiggins. I play in a band called the Daniel Wiggins Group, and we are at the festival this weekend. We're going to be playing at Settlers Tavern tomorrow night for the Sunday session. So if you're into sort of like prog rock, meets a bit of uh, heavy metal occasionally with some shreddy guitar stuff, then come down to Satin's Tavern tomorrow night. And also, if you are inclined to support what we're doing, I do have a few CDs. I just released a new album the other week, um, so they're over there if you do fancy picking up a CD for yourself. I know that's sort of outdated for us nowadays, but I love CDs, so let's, let's roll with it. All right. 
Once again, thanks very much for coming and enjoy the rest of your festival. Cheers. <laughs>